Welcome back to the University of Queensland School of Architecture introductory series to Rhino and Grasshopper. I'm going to pick up the example tower again and I'm going to continue defining the edge of the um, floor plate. Now at some point um, we need to start arraying this up through the whole um, building. Now we may decide to define the floor plate first and then array it up and that would work I guess if the floor plate was fixed the whole way up or if there was a simple translation like a twist but in this instance I'm going to do a, a different logic and instead generate the floor plate up through the tower because this curvature that we're going to introduce on this side will vary at each step along the way so what I'm going to do is start to parametricize all of the points that define the uh, floor plate and then after all the points have been parametricized I'll then connect them up and make the floor plates so it's a slightly different logic than we've been using for the tower uh, projects before what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll start with this point here now what we're going to to do is that in, in essence what I need to do is define a value. So I'm going to do a curve that bellies in at the bottom or the top and bellies out at the other so at the other opposite height or, or base of the tower. And I'm going to define that through a number slider. I'll pull up a number slider through here. So now what I'll do is I'll define this as the sort of maximum uh, curvature and I'll give this 10,000 is probably a bit steep so I'll give it a maximum range of, of 5,000 so how it's going to work is try and set up a series that I will start with the series through here now I want to get into this variable here we haven't used it very much it's the start number in the series but what I want to do is to be able to define it as a negative value so we'll get the number slider through here so that's going to be the maximum and do that as the start value so the start value through here will be minus 5000 so it will then put the uh, point here and then the plus 5000 will be out through there now if we wanted to be tricky what we actually could do is if we give ourselves a minimum value of minus 5000 as well then as we cycle through this it'll get minimum to maximum and with the negative and, and positive sort of swapping through here it depends on where we drag this whether it's in how the belly works at this side it, it means that we can either be in at the bottom and, and out at the top or if we slip it to the negative it can be out at the bottom and in at the top for what value that is we'll soon see so what I'm going to do just bear with me I'm going to do a multiplication and the logic of it is is that if we put in this maximum curvature into the multiplication and actually what we want to do is just simply double it so we're just going to do the multiplier as, as 2 and I'll squeeze that so what I'm trying to establish is the maximum uh, range for this uh, curvature so it'll be um, the maximum range will be 14 uh, 1.4 meters so the maximum range will be 2.8 so 1.4 on one side 1.4 on the other now what I'm going to have to do is actually introduce another number slider um, for the number of stories so let's call so number of levels and that will be the number of levels for our tower so I might limit that to um, let's say 60 stories so we're going to so we've got our kind of range here we'll do a divide so if we get our range through there the number of levels what we'll get is a step value so basically what will happen is that 
it will move in or out 70 millimeters every floor. So I'll delete that. So the step value will then plug into there and then our count will be again the number of levels. So we'll pop that in there. We'll try and neaten that up a little bit later. So if we have a look at what we've just created, if we pull that in through there, we should have a series of, of negative values because we've set the start value um, as the negative integer of, of that. So we get minus 1400 and it should go through all the way to um, one short of uh, 1400 on the other side. So it, it kind of, you can see it goes smaller to zero and then zero and grows bigger. So the logic of what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a just bear with me. So I'm going to be drawing a line from here, from the middle out, and I want that line to vary and the end of that line will then determine the point that will make that curve. But so what I'll do is that the series that I've made is the distance here, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add the overall distance or width of the building that um, I'm going to apply that variable to. So that width of the building then will be through here and then I'm going to get the series through there so I should get then the same kind of stepping values going through there. Now what I'll do is I'm going to set up another series that will duplicate the points up the building. So we've done that plenty of times before. So we've got the number of levels. Well, actually what we'll need is a another number slider for the floor to floor. And we'll give that a maximum of 5,000. Okay, okay. The step value floor to floor will be that. The count will be the number of floors. We're going to move a point upwards, so that will be a Z unit. And we'll get a move command through here. So that will be the move, oops, come here. Move, that's the transformation vector through there. So what we're going to do is this will then give us a series of points when we start to apply geometry to it. And if you look through here, remember that's our point there. If we plug that in there, we should get a whole bunch of points coming up through that series. So that's going to be the start of our line. Now, what I'm going to do is I will make a line, and this time I'm going to do this um, line SDL, which gives us a, a start point tangent and a length or distance. So We've got our variable distance as a series here, and that will go on to the length. Now, the start point is going to be the middle through here. So, I've got a bunch of start points there. Now, what I want this line is to actually go from here out that way. So, I'm going to put a uh, x value but it's going to be negative because this is the positive x and this is going to be the negative x through there. So um, I'll need to pull up a negative. So I'll get the x vector there and there. And you can see we've got a whole bunch of lines now. And if I just amp up the curvature through here, what you can see happening, so as we slide this back and forth, you can see the the lines are, um, in this case, shorter at the top, bigger at the bottom, and if we dial it up the other way, then we'll get a whole series of uh, lines going the other way. Now I'm going to use a uh, end points of a curve, and so I'll grab then a whole bunch of points off the end of that. So you can see here that's the start point, so that will be there. End points is actually what we want. So in order to make this curve, we're going to have to array up this point here, 
again, which is the uh, north uh, west corner, which is actually our seed point. So if we go a move command through here, get our seed points. Uh, we navigate to through here. That's the geometry. And don't forget, here's the series. So we're going to pop that translation vector through there. So there's all of our points coming this way. And the other one, which is the uh, north, uh, the north eastern point. So we're going to do a move there. Um, northeast corner, which is here. So that's the geometry. This is the vector going up. And so we've got a whole bunch of points going up through there now. To make then this um, leading edge of the, the floor plates, what I'm going to do is do an arc with three points this side, this side, this side. So we have to do these in sequence. So we'll put this into A. We want to get the middle point, which is these points here, which is the end points of that line. And then this, which is the, all of those end points through there. And then all of a sudden you can see we've got a bunch of, of curves that will define our our edge of our uh, edge of our floor plate, and you can see there as we move that back and forth, it's we'll then move it through, and that you can sort of not too hard to imagine when that goes through um, into the each of the floor plate how that's going to work over the whole building. So it's perhaps a little bit of a cryptic approach to um, the problem, and it was based on a bit of trial and error. So although we've sort of stepped through this reasonably smoothly, it was um, backed up by some design process, I guess, which was a bit messy. But we're going to leave it there, and then we'll pick it up, and we'll finish off the floor plates in the next video.